اشهد ان لا اله الا الله اشهد ان لا اله الا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah Nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu Wa nasta'gfiruhu Wa na'minu bihi Wa natawakkalu alayhi Wa na'udhu billahi Min shururi anfusina Wa min sayyati a'malina Man yahdihillahu falamudhillala Wa man yudhlilahu falahadiyala ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم رب إشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لسان يفقه قولي اللهم ربنا آتنا من لدنك رحمة وهيئ لنا من أمرنا رشدا اللهم ربي يسر ولا تعسر وتمم بالخير بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم سرق الله سرق الله العلي العظيم وسرق رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين أما بعد الحمد لله all praises and thanks are due to Allah سبحانه وتعالى for blessing us to be here today to perform the Salat al Jum'ah the Friday congregational prayer and to listen to the khutbah or the Friday sermon. Alhamdulillah, all praises and thanks are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for choosing us to belong to the Ummah, the followers of the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I pray 
and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his peace and blessings onto the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ala alihi wa sahabihi ajma'een and upon his family members and blessed companions. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his rahmah, his mercy upon each and every one of us. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his hidayah, his guidance upon us, to shower his forgiveness upon us, and to shower his acceptance upon us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our coming here today. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our salah, our prayer, our dua, our supplications, inshallah. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again to shower his rahmah, his mercy upon me by giving me the permission and the ability to be able to deliver this khutbah or sermon, inshallah. I remind you and I remind myself that as human beings, we are vaif, we are weak, we know nothing and we cannot do anything except by the permission and mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are nothing. And as I look at the box with a brother in there, it's exactly what the Quran has told us. We came from nothing and we'll go back to nothing. Before we came into the form of a human being, we were nothing. Only Allah knows the ruh and the soul. We were formed into the wombs of the mother or the mothers, born and Allah gave us life. At one stage as a baby, we had a tongue but we couldn't talk. We had hands but we couldn't use it. We had to be fed by the mothers. As a baby, we had legs but we couldn't walk. And then we grew up to be man and woman. We got strength, we got health, we got tongue, we got arrogance, we got pride, we got strength. And then we go back into this stage. Some of us, before we die, once a man, twice a child. Before we die, we become so sick, so weak, that we're just like a child again. Everybody got to do everything for us. And then we die, and the body becomes helpless. But sometimes we forget that when we're in this mode. And we don't feel to pray, we don't go to pray, we pray when we want, we do what we want. But we should always remember that Allah could bring us into a situation and has promised us that one day we will die as our brother lay in the box here today. And we won't be able to do anything. Hence, when we have health and strength, we must always ask Allah for the guidance. For we cannot do anything. Allah can seize our actions. Knowledge, ability to speak, to do, anytime He wants. Allah could take away our wealth and our strength and our power. Therefore, I always remind myself before I deliver a khutbah that I know nothing. And I ask Allah to shower onto me the permission and the ability to deliver this khutbah. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower onto me the quality of tawakkal ala Allah, the trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the taqwa, the piety, the iman, the faith, the hikmah, the wisdom, the ilm, the knowledge, and the ability to be able to deliver this sermon, inshallah. I put my trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and for our non-Muslim friends who are here, Allah means God Almighty, the God. God Almighty is the most merciful, the most sufficient, the most powerful. Brothers and sisters, for those of us who were here last week, you remember we started speaking on Ibrahim because in the next few weeks 
On the 5th of November, the millions of Muslims will be performing Hajj or pilgrimage in Mecca, Saudi Arabia. And on the 6th of November, the rest of the world will be commemorating Eid ul Adha, the festival of the sacrifice or the feast that commemorates that great trial, that great lesson that we have learned from the life or in the life of Prophet Ibrahim and his son Ishmael or Ismail and because the sacrifice that he went through, not the slaughtering of the animal, but the sacrifice, the test, the trial, if I would want to use the word trial, because a lot of times we mix up sacrifice with trial. The slaughtering of the sheep that Allah gave to him to celebrate his passing, the test of the trial, is a different thing to the trial. Allah says in the Quran that this has been indeed a great trial. So it was the trial. Because of the test and the trial in which God had commanded him to sacrifice his son. In the Bible, the Torah, the Psalms, they say God commanded Abraham to sacrifice Isaac. In the Quran, we say it was Ishmael. But it's the same lesson. There's a little theological complication there. So this is nothing new to the world. The trial of Ibrahim, peace be upon him. When he was called upon, he prayed and he longed for a son or child. And at the age of 83, God Almighty gave him that child. Ishmael or Ismail alayhi salatu And when the boy became 12 or 13 years, God said, I want him back. You see, sometimes we think that's strange. But that's not necessarily strange. God does that with all of us. What is so new about that? Don't we die? We all know that when we're born, as we grow up, we will one day die. Everybody knows that. But unfortunately, we don't prepare for that. And we think it's something strange. It is nothing strange. If you were to ask me, I will tell you, birth is more strange than death. Because you're not sure to born, but you're sure to die. You're not sure to born alive, but you're sure to die after you come alive. So much If a mother tells you she has a child in her stomach, it's not all babies are born alive. But you know for sure when the baby is born, someday that baby will die. Next day or next hundred years. So one thing for sure is death. So we shouldn't be amazed of death. The only difference here is God called upon Abraham and said, I want you to go and slaughter your son. That was the only difference. Because God wanted to try his faith to see if he believed that this one and only son that God gave to me, Ishmael, or Ismail alayhi salatu wasalam, and I believe that God gave him to me if I am going to be prepared to give him back to God. Or I'm going to become selfish. Last week we spoke on the link or the connection of Ibrahim to the Psalms, the Torah, the Bible, and the Quran. The week before we spoke with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on Sarah and Hagar. They are linked to Jews, Christians, and Muslims. Because it's very biblical, very Quranic. It's a basic message. Today, and if you look into the Quran or the Torah or the Bible or the Psalms, they will all tell you that the way of Abraham, Millah to Ibrahim, Jesus, Moses, and the prophets told everybody to follow the way of Abraham, peace be upon him, and obey the God of Abraham. And the Quran tells us that also. Last week we spoke on that, the Iznillah. Today, inshallah, in the second khutbah, we want to touch on and for the people or the visitors who are here and waiting for the janazah, just to let you know that the Friday service, as you see, began. It finishes at 1, at 2.30, 2.35. 
Then we pray the Salah and then do the Janazah prayer for the brother that passed away, inshallah. And that's why we encourage people to bring the body here for Juma so the family members can join and they can have a big congregation to pray for him, the Janazah, inshallah, inshallah. And he's very fortunate. He's very fortunate to come here for Juma and get the hundreds of people to join in Janazah Salah after, inshallah. In the second khutbah, we will continue and remind ourselves a little bit on the lesson or the taqwa. The taqwa of Prophet Ibrahim والسلام, and the sacrifice. Not just the, the sacrifice or the slaughtering of the sheep. We want to get into the purpose, the piety. The real lesson of why that whole scenario took place, inshallah, in the second khutbah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us Jannah or paradise without reckoning, inshallah. Wa akhir da'wan alhamdulillah. Ya Rabbil Alameen. Teri shan ke ho laik Wo sana kaha se laun Teri shan ke ho laik Wo sana kaha se laun Tujhe aaye pyaar jis par Wo nida kaha se laun वो निदा कहाँ से लाऊं तेरी शान के होलायत वो सना कहाँ से लाऊं तुझे आए प्यार जिस पर वो निदा कहाँ अल्लाह الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوقل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ما يهده الله فلا مضل له وما يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد ولا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله. Once more we thank Allah سبحانه وتعالى for blessing us to be here today to perform the Salat al Jum'a and to listen to the Khutbah. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his peace and blessings onto the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ala alihi wa sahabihi ajma'een. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his mercy, his forgiveness, his guidance, and his acceptance upon each and every one of us. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again to shower his mercy onto me by giving me the permission and the ability to continue with the second khutbah, inshaAllah. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show unto me the quality of tawakkal ala Allah, the trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the taqwa, the piety, the iman, the faith, the hikmah, the wisdom, the ilm, the knowledge and the ability to continue with the second khutbah, inshaAllah. I put my trust, I put my tawakkal in Allah. And indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most sufficient. In the Holy Quran, Surah Hajj, it's called Surah Hajj, chapter 22 of the Quran, ayah number 37. And I read from the Quran directly to the point on what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says here. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Layyana Allah. Layyana Allah luhu muha. Wala dima uha. Interesting. Allah says, neither the meat luhu muha. Neither its meat or its blood reaches Allah. So, a lot of times people get mixed up and get lost into the physical sacrifice of Idul Adha, slaughtering of the animal, and, which is excellent and which is what we have to do. That's a whole different subject matter. 
But Allah is also telling us here that the meat and the blood is not what Allah wants. That's not what Allah wants. Walakay, walakay yana lahu taqwa, subhanallah. Taqwa minkum, Allah says. Kadhalika sakharaha lakum. Allah says, but it is our piety that he wants to see. When a person celebrates on Eid and we do the sheep or the goat or whatever, Allah says he doesn't want blood or flesh. But it is the taqwa, taqwa minkum. It is the piety from us he wants to see. How God conscious we are. And what we do for God Almighty. لِتُكَبِّرُ اللَّهِ Allahu Akbar ala ma hadakum Allah says what he wants to check on us is to see if we will glorify Allah for the guidance for the favors for the bounties for the health and wealth that he has given to us Interesting. You see, many a times we get so cultural and we get caught up. You know, people get all lost. Oh boy, it's Eid al-Adha. They're all into biryani and cooking food and eating meat and fighting about who to what meat and eat and the whole time gets lost in that. I want to cut that off one point and say, yes, we have to get prepared. Look for the animals because in the Bible, in the Torah, in the Psalms, in the Quran, we all know that when God commanded Abraham to sacrifice his son, in the Quran, we know it's Ismail alayhi salatu wa salam, as he was about to sacrifice the son, the angel came and called him out and brought for him a ram sheep. And God said, it wasn't your son I really wanted. I wanted to see if you had love for God and how much faith you had in God. And if you're willing to give what you have for God, if you're willing to give up what you love, you know, like today, we love money, we love wealth, we love position, we love power, we love ego, we love pride. And will, I want to see God is saying, if you will give up that for God. You know, if you look back, you see Pharaoh in the Bible. Pharaoh, or in the Quran, Pharaoh he's called. How arrogant he was with his power, his wealth, his pride. He did not even want to believe in God. He thought he was God. Remember the story of Moses and Pharaoh? So Allah, in this symbol, وَتَرَكْنَا عَلَيْهِ فِي الْآخِرِينَ Allah has left this Eid al-Adha celebration that we celebrate as a reminder of that great test and trial that Prophet Ibrahim passed. So, to cut a long story short, yes, brothers and sisters, and we will deal with that later on as we get ahead. Start getting prepared. Look for your animals. Do your things. Get things prepared. Get things in order and commemorate the occasion because it's an order from Allah. It's a blessing from Allah. Allah doesn't want the blood or the meat. It's not about worshipping idols or anything. Allah wants to see if in America, Muslims will take the time to go and find a sheep and slaughter it and celebrate the feast in the name of God to commemorate that Abraham, peace be upon him, did. Today, Muslims have become so lazy in America, we start sending the money abroad and say, well, we're helping the poor. If you want to help the poor, you could send sadaqah. You could send zakat. Sometimes, if you want to do it, send, do, a, do it there and also do it here. But a lot of people, out of laziness, they don't want to make the time to look for the animal. They find it's too expensive in America. They want to drive expensive motor cars. They want to live in expensive homes, but they don't want to spend in an expensive way for God. See how we are? Urdu me kehte hai kanjus. You call these people misers. You want to benefit in US dollars, but when you got to spend for God, you want to send it away in rupees. Where is the sacrifice? Where is the sacrifice of the time to go look for the animal, slaughter the animal, have the feast, take the meat, share it for the poor, have the feast, enjoy as Ibrahim enjoyed when he passed the test. 
So that's a whole different lesson. We'll talk about that sometime in a few days, inshallah. Today we want to remind ourselves on the taqwa. A taqwa minkum, as Allah says. It's not the blood and flesh that he wants. He wants to see our piety. Brothers and sisters, we've got to look at the lesson of this story of Ibrahim, peace be upon him. His lesson was the test that he went through, that here is this son that God gave him, that he was longing for, he was 83 years. The son is now 12 or 13 years. And now God is saying he wants back the son. So he had to make a choice whether he loved the son more or he loved God more. And he proved to God that I love you more and I'll give you this one and only son that I have. That's what Allah wanted to see. And Allah didn't want the son. Just as he was about to do it, he says, take the sheep and celebrate. You passed your exam. You know what I'm saying? That's how it works. So today, what is the lesson for us? Today we have things in our life that we love. And we place those things before God. When it's time to pray, we get so involved in those things, we say we'll pray after. When it comes to giving charity in the name of God, we say we need to do our worldly things first. Worldly things first, then we'll put the rest for God. It wasn't that Abraham, peace be upon him, said, well, I have 11 sons and I'll give you one. It was his one and only son. The sacrifice comes, the trial and test comes when we give, when it hurts. The enjoyment in prayer is when you could leave off the worldly things and go and pray in the middle of the day when it's time for Zuhar Salah. Say, okay, money and world, I'm going to pray. Instead of take your one hour break for lunch from your jobs and sit and eat and giggle and wiggle all over the place, take half an hour, make wudu, go and pray in your car or in your office or somewhere. In the middle of the world, the enjoyment. That's what Allah wants to see, the piety in us. Allah wants to check our piety, the sacrifice we'll make. And you know, very interesting, every time got a different sacrifice. In this world and this time for Muslims, the sacrifice is the Quran. Do you know that? Yeah. You see, you got to remember in history, in the time of Moses, or in the time of Abraham, peace be upon him, you know what was one of, the, one of the biggest tests? There were many trials, but what was the biggest test for the people? Idols. Idol worship. Remember that's where the challenge was? That they wanted to throw him in the fire? Why did they throw him in the fire? Because he didn't want to worship idols. Go check the Bible, the Torah tells you that, the Quran. So in his time, the test and trial with those people and that environment was idols. People was wanted him to worship idols. In the time of Moses, peace be upon him, the big trial and power thing at that time was what? Magic. Magicians and their powers. That's why Pharaoh, or Pharaoh, even though he was king and he had money and power and wealth, who were his henchmen? Magicians. So when, Pharaoh's, when Moses peeps upon him started speaking of God, Pharaoh said, come, if you think you're good and you're God, come face my magicians. So the power of magic was the name of the game. And what Allah did? Allah gave him the power of magic. Just to make it look so in small eyes. But it wasn't the power of magic. It was the power of Allah. Allah said, have no fear. Throw this. See this? You remember the story? He said, what's that in your hand? He said, my stick. He said, throw it down. And when he threw it down, what happened? It turned into a snake. And Moses got frightened. And Allah said, don't fright. Don't be afraid. People in Dawah, don't be afraid. People who in the path of God have no fear. He said, pick it up back. And as he picked it up back, it turned back into the stick. Go check the Bible, the Torah, and the Quran. Ideal example. Looks right here. See? So he wanted to prepare him when Pharaoh comes with all his magicians and throw all his snakes, he will throw his big snake and he will eat them all up. Uh, the power of Allah. And in the time of Jesus, peace be upon him, 
One of the things that trickled the minds of people was health. People were very much concerned of health. That's how he healed the blind and he healed the leper, the man who had leprosy. By the touch, he was into healing. And even till today, if you look around, healing is a big thing in Christianity because that was one of the measuring tape that people looked out for in spiritual men. The power of healing. You see? And in the time of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what was the challenge? Not magic, not healing. Poetry, eloquence, intelligence, speech. That's why Allah speaks of this Quran as a book of wisdom, hikmah, knowledge, eloquence, speech, a language easy to understand. And the people challenged the prophets and Allah challenge the people and the people try to challenge the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in poetry and poetic verses and eloquence but the quran superseded them all book of language wisdom eloquence science that's the time we are into and that's why i said the miracle for the muslims today is this but we don't learn it and study it and the challenge to the muslims today is not that magic You know, last week, I was telling you last week, Friday, when I asked you all to do this brochure, and you see some people take this for a joke. Alhamdulillah, Allah bless the brothers and sisters who contributed towards it. And we still need about 10 people to do about 100 each. And it's only $75 for 100. When I went to that synagogue, is the brother here with me who went? I don't know. I can't see if he's here or not here. Yeah, brother Wahid went with me last week. He's witness. He was with a the camera. They attacked me and you so bad you'll be ashamed. And some of us come here and sleep. We're comfortable as though nothing is happening in the world. One guy pulled out his iPhone, pulled up the Quran and the verses and said, here's your dangerous Quran that is all about destruction and violence and killing people. That was a challenge. Not magic and idols. I had to challenge atheists there last week. And they were like, your Quran needs to be thrown away. Throw it away, it's no good. And I was jubilant. We Muslims come and sleep. And we look on Eid Day, we're eating, you're eating beef and goat in a big way. And we lost the message of the Eid al-Adha. We lost the message of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. That's why I was telling you, this message tells you about Ibrahim, the first name here, Abraham. And how it's linked to Moses and Jesus. And they were saying, you know, I was telling you years ago about 9-11. Forget about 9-11. Here, two, three hundred people in an auditorium in Boca Raton told me clearly that you bunch of Muslims you want to have nothing to do with you all. You're a bunch of criminals and terrorists. They didn't say Bin Laden is a terrorist. They say all of us. Look, the brothers are witness there. That's why we need to educate people. If they don't educate themselves, we have given them the message. Who is Abraham? What is the Bible? What is the Quran? Who we are? What is the Quran? Who is Abraham? What is Islam? We don't care about that. You know, eat coming. We'll all be, come, boy, eat. Let's eat goat and sheep. And you ask some of these bunch of eaters, what have they done to spread the message of Abraham? They'll say nothing but eat the sheep. That's what we're all about. You know, sometimes I, I wonder, and that's why I'm saying right here in our backyard, we faced that last week. The kind of statements they were saying that you guys, your Quran says to kill all of us. And I'm, and I'm telling them, because the more we need to send this more and more, and I proved to them and I told them, but they wouldn't listen in five minutes. Now, there were those who were very nice. There were those who were willing to understand. We have, alhamdulillah. In fact, you know in Al-Hikmat magazine, we have a rabbi who runs a column. He's writing about, about Abraham. Next few weeks, we have an Abrahamic feast here. The al Haya youths and Darulum students have a grand Abrahamic fe feast. We got a priest around the corner there. We got a rabbi. They're going to come here. They're going to show. We got nice, good people. But those who understand, those people who read the Quran and studied the Bible and Torah, they understand who is Ishmael and who is Abraham, alayhi salatu wasalam. Those Christians and Jews and atheists who have read the Bible and the Quran, they know who is Abraham. They know who is Ishmael. They know who is Isaac, peace be upon him. But those who didn't read it, they don't know. And some of us equally don't know. And we don't want others to know. That Jews, Christians, Muslims all have one religion and one God. They came from the same origin and same father. 
That's why I said we need to do thousands of these. I took it, the brother took it, we put it there for them. And I announced it, we got this, go take this. When the man challenged me, I said, go take this brochure and read it. So all those brothers who have sponsored $75 for 100 you will get blessings when we change every idiot to understand the truth of Islam. That's what Islam is all about. You know, sometimes I wonder, I know that's a whole different stage going to teach people about Quran and Bible and God. And the oneness. It's all about education. This is the challenge today, not magic. This is what we need to spread the message of the Quran. And if that's the, the, the misunderstanding of the world, Jesus and Moses and Abraham and David and Solomon, we need to educate people from the Quran what the Quran says about it. What the Bible says, the commonality. Ta'ala wila kalimatin sawaim bayna na wabayna kum. As the Quran says, chapter 3, verse 64. Invite the people to know about Abraham and Moses and Jesus and what the Quran says. And the oneness of understanding between Christian Jews and Muslims. How they all worship one God. They all have that father Abraham. They all come from one big family. And where they have differed and how they should unite together. You see, you don't understand what's happening. Satan used magic. To fool the people at the time of Moses, peace be upon him. And today Satan is using influence of science and brain. And this is the book of science and brain and wisdom. And the atheist was sitting next to me. And it had a couple of them in the audience. They were just, and they, they were not attacking the other guys, you know, they were attacking me. And you know, I had one brother with me, but beside him, Allah was with me. And I'm like, where are these bunch of Muslims born? Two, three hundred people in the audience. But you see, I tell you how life operates. I'll give you a little joke as we conclude the khutbah. When this brother, two days ago, the sister called the office to tell us the brother is sick and he's in the hospital to come and make du'a and pray because his wish was for someone to come and make du'a and pray. His wish was to come, if he has to pass away, to come to the mosque and have the last rites. And Allah blessed him. He got his wish. Allahu Akbar. When you know something interesting happen, happen, and I want to share that joke with you all, and it's not a joke, it's a serious thing. Before the sister call, a priest called, the chaplain of the hospital, called Al Hikmat office and said there's a brother and his name and that he's sick and needs the, someone, that, the imam, to come and pray for him. So, mashallah, I went in the evening and alhamdulillah, Brothers there, the sisters were there, alhamdulillah. And as soon as I prayed and I left and I came back here to Dar al to have a class, within the hour I got a text that he just passed away. Inna lallahi wa inna ilahi rajun. He was waiting for that final prayer and dua, alhamdulillah. And he got his wish right here. This was his wish. So the girl in my office, Salma, said, Uncle, why don't we open a funeral service for Al-Hikmat? Because the sister wanted to know how to bury, where to bury, what to do. How... And I started to laugh. I said, me and Al Hikmat Funeral Services, I already deal with a bunch of people. They're all dead already. Okay, looking for them to go in Dawa, nobody available to go in Dawa. You're looking for them to do brochures, half of them sleeping. I, don't, I only deal with the dead ones, not twice. Not before you go in the box, after you go in the box. She was like, Al Hikmat Funeral Services. I'm like, not at all. I'll do that fee sabilela. But not formally and officially. You know why? Because you're looking for brothers to go with you with three, four hundred people when atheists and a bunch of idiots attacking you and the Quran and these bunch of dead people sleeping home, eating. When I call on Muslim brothers to go for dawah, do you know what the answers I get? And I want to let you know, Darulum doesn't pay me to go and do these services. Ask Brother Azad, he doesn't pay me. I do it for Sabilallah. And I want you all to do it for Sabilallah. It's a shame to know a priest has to call a Muslim to pray for a Muslim. Because a bunch of Muslims sleeping. We Muslims should be in hospitals taking care and praying for these people. Where are the Muslims? When I look for a Muslim, come with me in the hospital. It's a priest got to call me to tell me here is a Muslim who needs someone. Because Muslims in America are all about the dream of America. House, property, money. When I call some brothers, brother, you want to go with me in the hospital? No, i got to pick up my kids. I'm working right now. I'm going to see a house to buy. My wife doesn't want me to come. What kind of garbage? That's why I said they're a bunch of dead people. They got all dead excuses, which Allah doesn't listen to. 
A priest got to call a Muslim to pray for a Muslim? What has happened to us? When the Prophet says Muslims should be involved in taking care of the dead and the sick, and we don't find the time to go in the hospitals and look for the Muslims and pray for them? What's happened to us? But you ask the Muslims, they're busy buying houses, building houses, buying motor cars, making money. And when I call them, some of them so shameless, they say, my wife doesn't want me to go. Sign of Kiyama. The wife got to give you permission to go and do Fisa Bilila work. You see his wife to the side of him? Anybody? See, look and see if you see. You think you see any house deed? Are you seeing property deed? Do you see husband or wife or anybody? Have you ever seen any house deed and property deed and Lexus and Mercedes title certificate to the side of a dead body? Huh? All the things and excuses that we make in the world today, human beings, before we could do good, spread the message of the Quran, teach the Quran, learn the Quran, pray for the dead, go to the hospitals, visit the sick, pray for them. We don't have time for that. Because we're busy in all the other things that do not go with us. Look, I've never seen anybody put house and property, nor anybody wife or son or daughter or husband go with them in the grave. That's what we need to learn. And those are the things that keep us away from Allah. And when we die, that's what we need. The last thing, the house of Allah. The prayers of the Quran. Before we die, after we die. So that's what we need to get set ahead and that's what I'm saying. Today, the miracle of the world is the Quran. Let's all join and spread this message. Educate the world. The attack on Muslims is about the education of the Quran. People have misunderstood it. People don't understand it. They don't know it. And the way to start to let them know is about Abraham and God. Because that's where the commonality is. God, one God, and Abraham who is linked to Judaism, Christianity, everybody, David, Solomon, Moses, Jesus, Abraham. We need to spread that message. So at least they will educate themselves. That's the blessing. Time does not permit us, brothers and sisters, but it hurts. It really hurts. It hurts to know that, you know, all the time you're looking for Muslims. And I'm telling you, even myself, I cannot, I cannot do it enough in the hospitals. Sometimes Hollywood Hospital calling me. Pembroke Pines Hospital, Flamingo, Miramar. You can't do it alone. And then when you can't go in your time when you finish make money in, jo in the job, you've got to do it when the people call you. I told you, I went, asked the sister, immediately by the time I left the hospital and came here, the man died. So if I had said, like some people are busy making money right now, I can't come, you'd have gone after the man died. How much in the dunya do we want to make? When are we going to pray and do good and spread the message of the Quran and visit the sick, help with the dead, do what we have to do. You call for people to bathe the dead, one brother available, and he also needs a ride. I'm telling you, yes, I'm telling you my experience. The brother is here. Now. If I don't share this experience with you, when the brother, dead body is right here, what am I going to do it? You're looking for somebody to help bathe the dead, one is available. He needs a ride, and the rest are other idiots with their Mercedes and, and parked up in their garage and their Lexus, and they can't do good for Huh? Then when we die, what's going to happen to us? We may not even have someone to bathe us. If we don't do for other people, then what is going to happen to us? We may think that we live here, but we don't know where we will die and when we will die and how it will happen. We could be going in an aircraft, we could be going in a train, we could be going in a car, we could die in some other place. Nobody will be there to bathe us and bury us Islamically. That's why we need to spend the time now and devote. Some brothers need to do that. I can't even get brothers to come and learn to read the Quran, for us to learn to bathe the dead, to bury the dead. Of course you can't even do it for yourself. What are we doing? But you know what? Everybody busy. Money, house, car. Motor car, money, how? they all have and they're making more and more and more. Anyhow, time doesn't permit me, you know, but I just must tell you what I go through and I use this personal example. This personal example, this example right here. And I hope and pray that Allah will give us the ability and the iman and the faith, brothers and sisters. Please make some time for Islam. That's your future. That's what will go with you when you go in the grave. Help spread the message of the Quran. 
Help learn and teach the message. Right now, I told you the attack in the world is this misunderstanding. The more we could spread and get verses of this Quran out, is the more hate we will keep down and educate those people who don't like Islam and don't like Muslims and have misunderstood it. It's all ignorant. And that's our challenge today. That's the eloquence and the science and the knowledge of this Quran. And that's what people attack today, the Quran. That's what they have misunderstood. And in learning the Quran, we will know our duties for other human beings, the sick, the dead, the community. And I tell you, a living exam, I don't care how many people give me all this big fat Islam boast. Oh boy, you wait for Islam, all these Muslims boast to me. Boy, I read Quran, I complete a whole Quran in Ramadan, I fast the whole of Ramadan, I do this. And you're looking for them to go in the part of Allah and they have no time, they're under their wife's skirt. Signs of Qiyamah. They can't get permission from the wife, therefore Allah, when they will get permission from Allah. That's a dangerous sign. That's why the Prophet Sallallahu says the sign of the day of judgment will be when men will wait for permission from women and women will rule them. That is when the time of the world will be destroyed. And today to go in the path of Allah, we don't wait for the wife permission to buy a house and buy a motor car and, and go in the dunya and go on a vacation, but you wait for the wife permission to come to masjid and go and see the sick and go to a funeral. That's the sign of destruction. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. May he guide us. If I have said anything wrong, forgive me. And if I have said anything right from the Quran and Hadith, it is min Allah. I only want to remind myself and remind you. And that's why you see, I tell you, I do these things, fi sabil Allah. Only so Allah will give me the blessings and I could stand up here and tell you, do it for Allah. Not because anybody paying you. And that's what I want to tell you. People normally tell me, well, that's your job. It's not my job. Nobody pays me to do this. Brother Azad sitting here, chairman of Darulum. I do it for Allah. So I want you all to get involved in da'wah and deen for Allah. Not for dollar and for money. If you want a copy of this CD, you could get it after. After the khutbah, it's all automatically recorded. You want to get some of these, please go get it after. Allah bless us, inshallah. Ya Allah, ya rahman rahimin, ya ghaffur rahim. Alhamdulillah, ya Allah. We thank thee for all the favors and bounties you have bestowed upon us. We ask thee to send your peace and blessings unto the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We ask thee, Allah, to give us all the good in this world and the good in the hereafter. Allahumma rabbana atina fi dunya hasanatan wa fil akhirati hasanatan wa kina azaba naad. Wa sallallahu ta'ala ala khayri qalqihi wa ala alihi wa sahabihi ajma'in bi rahmatika ya rahman rahimin. Inna Allahu malaikatuhu yusalluna ala nabi ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Mawlana Muhammad wa ala Ali Muhammadin bi adadi man sallallahu wa sallam. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Mawlana Muhammad wa ala Ali Muhammadin bi adadi man qa'ada wa qam. Wa salli ala jamiyya al-anbiya wal mursaleen wa ala kulli malaikatika al-muqarrabin. Wa ala ibadillahi salihin bi rahmatika ya arhamar rahimin. Ibadullah, inna Allah ya'amadu bil'adli wal ihsan wa ita idhi al-qurba wa yanha ala al-fahsha wa al-munkari wa al-baghi. Ya'idhukum la'allakum tathakkaroon. Wa la dhikru Allahi ta'ala a'la wa awla wa a'izu wa jallu wa hamu wa akbar. Allahu akbar. مدینے کے دن رات اللہ اکبر مدینے کی کیا بات اللہ اکبر مدینے کے دن رات اللہ اکبر مدینے کی کیا بات اللہ اکبر مدینے کے دن رات اللہ اکبر مدینے کی کیا بات اللہ اکبر مدینے کے دن رات اللہ اکبر مدینے کی کیا بات اللہ اکبر اللہ اکبر اللہ اکبر اللہ اکبر اللہ اکبر اللہ اکبر ازانوں کے لمحات اللہ اکبر نمازوں کے اوقات اللہ اکبر ازانوں کے لمحات اللہ اکبر نمازوں کے اوقات اللہ اکبر اللہ اکبر اللہ اکبر اللہ اکبر اللہ اکبر اللہ اکبر یہ قبر النبی اور یہ محراب و ممبر یہ قبر النبی اور یہ محراب و ممبر مقدس مقامات 
اللہ اکبر مقادس مقامات اللہ اکبر یہ قبر النبی اور یہ محراب و ممبر یہ قبر النبی اور یہ محراب و ممبر مقدس مقامات اللہ اکبر مقدس مقامات اللہ اکبر مواجہ مبارک سلاموں کی بارش مواجہ مبارک سلاموں کی بارش درودوں کی سوغات اللہ اکبر